मिस्टर स्लाट को आगुम किया मिस जेनिफर बोई ओके मिस्टर चेन यू मिस्टर पान जेन जोंग Mr. Zhang Weiwei, Mr. Li Xiaoyun, and Ms. Yan Xiaohong. Now let's welcome our moderator, Mr. Yami Owen, news anchor of CGTN, please. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, hello, good afternoon, uh, and welcome to uh, this afternoon's session. My name is uh, Jamie Owen from CGTN Europe. Uh, ordinarily, I'm the uh, television anchor uh, based in our bureau in uh, London, sitting in a studio talking to uh, a television camera. Uh, so it's always a great shock uh, looking straight into the eye of such a glamorous bunch of international jet setters such as yourselves. Uh, welcome to our, our audience here in Davos, and welcome to, to our audience uh, online watching uh, the live stream. Uh, as you can see, we have a, a wonderful uh, bunch of speakers to uh, talk to us today. Uh, I hope you have your own questions. Uh, it's the usual format. Uh, put up your hand, tell us who you are, uh, where you're from, uh, and our, our speakers, I'm sure, will do their best to uh, answer your questions uh, at the end of the session. Uh, our theme this afternoon uh, is sharing experience on poverty alleviation and promoting global poverty reduction. Uh, as if you needed reminding, let me share with you some of our headlines from Davos this week. The world's 2,000 billionaires have more wealth uh, than the 4.6 billion people who make up 60% of the planet's population. Uh, our sexist economies are fueling the inequality crisis, uh, enabling a wealthy elite to accumulate fortunes at the expense of ordinary people, particularly poor women and girls. Uh, and the 32 richest men in the world uh, have more wealth than all of the women in Africa. Uh, these are not my words, ladies and gentlemen, uh, but the words of Oxfam in their latest report, uh, which is called Time to Care. So I think you probably agree some big questions to uh, consider. Uh, how do we define poverty? Uh, is it simply a question of uh, financial poverty? Uh, should we also ponder poverty of information, perhaps poverty of health, uh, poverty of opportunity, and perhaps poverty of environment too? Uh, it's a very great pleasure to uh, introduce our first speaker, uh, who needs little introduction. He is the former president of the Republic of Bulgaria. Uh, Rosen, please speak to us first of all. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, very proud to be with you today. It's a great tradition. Uh, we've been here today a year ago. We are again today. I hope we're going to be also together in the future. Uh, president, to be an acting president is a very tough job. To be a former president is a great job. <laughs> and <laughs> I have to share with you, now it's a very positive phase of development, I travel a lot, visit China, love China. Just in November, uh, we visited twice a group of former presidents, heads of states, China, on two very important conferences, uh, the Understanding China Conference and uh, the Guangzhou um, uh, Empire, Stay, Empire, Empire Springs Conference. Two meetings with the President Xi Jinping in one month. And uh, I was very, very, very listening very carefully to what he said. Because as a politician, as a head of state, I've not been looking, talking to all the world leaders to strength. I've been looking for wisdom. And I was very happy to hear President Xi Jinping telling me, Mr. President, he said, you know, the world is like a green field, uh, like a meadow, but we don't want just to have one or two flowers that blossom. We want to have all the flowers to blossom. Um, and that's a principle, to put 
peace first, not your own interest first. To put development, fair trade, joint cooperation first, and not just a short-sighted national egoistic interest. And a very important principle in politics is also to look for results, because that's what people want to see. People are really fed up of politicians promising everything, not delivering on what they promise. And if we look at China, it's a great example of delivering results for people. I'm using this opportunity here to thank China. To thank you for what you've done, especially on having a long-term plan, how everyone could benefit, how ordinary people could see a hope, a given hand, a horizon, how can you improve infrastructure, education for everyone, how can you lift up everyone out of poverty. I was very, very, very proud to be part of two global consensus in back in the five years, and that the one was actually in those turbulent times, there were a lot of discomfort, a lot of instability was going on, but we managed to achieve two consensus on a global level. The one was the SDGs 2030, and the other one is the Paris Climate Change Agreement. I was very proud also to put my signature on both of them. And I'm gonna finish these introductory works also words by telling you how um, important it is to all of us, looking for results, elevate people, give them hope, get rid of poverty, just to understand how important it is that the SDGs, we all agreed and we all signed, 193 countries, 193 nations, rich or poor, strong or weak, great or regional, or no powers at all, but all of them together agreed on a global plan for 17 SDGs and every one of them makes a huge sense to the planet and to the ordinary people. And one of them is el uh, eliminate pro pro uh, poverty. And I thank China again for what you've done. Actually, if we look at the numbers, the United Nations uh, numbers today, based on the United Nations criteria today, you could see that the absolute number of po poor people in China today is less than the absolute, absolute number of poor people in the United States, based on the UN criteria. It's not based on some other criteria, and that's a great result. Continue modernizing, continue pushing, year by year, having a plan, understand, and that's for every government, how important it is to have a long-term plan. The 70s SDGs are interlinked, interrelated, Every one of them is extremely important. Energy efficiency, as important as, uh, as uh, education, as poverty lifting. All of them work together to help nations achieve goals that are important to be proud when you face our children. Because today our children are on the streets, they're protesting. They don't think that we're doing enough to have a cleaner and a more just planet. Because of that, the SDG is a very sound base to stand, and that's what we're doing also in the European Union, having a 2030 strategy, year by year, have a clear plan, indexes of what you have to achieve, 2020, 2021, 2022, work hard to push for good results. And China is a great example. Success, which is based on a plan, how to succeed, and the right approach, how to succeed. Let's hope everyone will join that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, ladies and gentlemen, next to uh, speak to us uh, in our session, uh, the former Prime Minister of Bosnia and Herzegovina, a great pleasure to uh, uh, invite Professor Zlatko Lagomirja to uh, talk to us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I'll just connect with you and with Rosen. I mean, Rosen said uh, about what is being former president and president. I can just add that uh, uh, it is very important in your life to become president or prime minister because, believe me, that's the only way you can become the former one. <laughs> uh, so, point number one. Point number two, you started with Oxfam report. I think it's a great introduction. Just to remind you, uh, 40 years ago, when China started opening up, when Deng Xiaoping had his historic visit to Washington for the first time, uh, that was the time when uh, Oxfam predecessors warned that we are getting in alarming situation that uh, one percent one percent of population is having almost one third of the wealth can you imagine that was warning that 10 percent of the people in the world have almost 90 percent of the wealth and that was warning today we have what we do have at the same time uh, president carter had on his table 
something which is called China Report, which was saying, produced by American Academy of Science, they were saying that by 2030, if we continue business as usual, uh, we will have global warming going up for 3%, 3 centigrade, and it will be disastrous. So we knew it. The top people knew it. But of course, today we are where we are. So what I can say by looking from outside at the China, few, just three short points as a lesson about our topic. And of course, uh, talking, having in mind what is my own experience from inside the box, looking at my country. So uh, point number one, I think that we are entering into the time in which uh, the golden world should be shared. From shared vision, shared benefits, shared leadership, shared development, shared responsibility, shared education, shared knowledge, shared technology, and so on and so on. So golden word of, in front of us, if it's not shared, we are going to be in going in the wrong direction irreversibly. Having said so, I think that it is very important to understand that uh, what I learned from Chinese, the point is not how to be dividing current cake and big, get the bigger piece of it, but how to make cake not only bigger, but smarter, Today we are, produce, we, are re, we are spending about 2.5 times more resources than the one planet needs. So it's not only producing more, it's smarting, but producing much smarter. Having said so, I think point number one is after making cake bigger, and we are all familiar with Chinese miracolo uh, figures about in the last 70 years going 174, 75 times bigger GDP, at the same time, globe went 18 times more, which means that you went faster. And we know everything about Chinese economy, but it's not about economy. It's basically speaking about having poverty reduction strategy that is based not only on reducing poverty, but at the same time creating centers of excellence in technology, in education, in research, in development, and not only having stronger economy, but having, before all, stronger knowledge base in human capacity. In the last 70 years, number of students in China went up 300 times, while population went up three times. So you produced more human capacity on that level. But that's not what is amazing me the most. What is amazing me the most is uh, results of PISA test. That is talking about 15 years old kids that there is only one superpower in the world. Guess which one? The one that we are, that, is, host, that is hosting us today. <laughs> now, speaking about Bosnia and Bulgaria, I think it's very interesting. I mean, the data about poverty reduction strategy, I think it's something which struck me before when I was going, coming in here. Uh, in last, having in mind that you had a strategy, you scaled down in the last six years, number of people living in poverty for 83 million. Okay? Because you have a strategy, someone is in charge, and everyone is in charge. 83 million people, it's Germany. Last year, latest figures that I found a few days ago, last year in 2019, you scaled down the number of people from poverty, size of Bulgaria and Bosnia together. So, we also have a hope that it is possible. <laughs> and <laughs> last point, third point, it's about leadership. It's about leadership. It's about leadership based on shared responsibility for ordinary people and shared responsibility for being much more powerful in education, knowledge, research, and development. On the end of the day, it's about leadership. So there's a lot of job to do, not only you, but all of us, right? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, it's a great pleasure to introduce to you next the Director General and Spokeswoman of uh, China State Council Leading Group Office on Poverty Alleviation and Development. Uh, Ms. Su, if you would speak to us, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Moderator. I'm from the State Council Poverty Reduction uh, Leading Office. I'm very glad to be here at Davos to attend this high-level forum. This is the richest place in the world, but uh, the places that I often visit will be the most uh, vulnerable and poor region in China. Before 
I came here. That is sixteenth uh, to eighteenth of this month. I went to uh, this poor village called Dianshan Village in the Hebei Province. And twenty thirteen, I went same village. At that time, the income is only three thousand RMB per year. Only corn grown in the field. There was no industry, no processing. The only income comes from the labor in the cities and the unpaved road in the villages. So on the rainy days, people could not work out. There is no clinic office. There, there is no school, and the peop students need to travel twenty kilometers to receive school in another town. It's very poor. And miserable uh, inside, but this time I feel same village looks like very different. First of all, when I walk into the village, we see all the mud uh, house became the house made of bricks, cement uh, and bricks. We see nursery, kindergarten, uh, primary school, and uh, the clinic service. The the income and Per capita income was four times of 2013, almost 12,000 RMB per year per capita. So this changes uh, is something we see in the poverty reduction throughout China. From 1987, when China opened up to the world and make economic growth. As the priority, and uh, we continue to work for the last uh, 40 years, especially after 2013, when China made the 13th five year planning, the poverty reduction was l listed uh, uh, the top priority, especially the absolute poverty reduction and the regional poverty reduction. This is something we have been working ever since. The changes in the Dianshan village showed first it is driven by economic growth. Previously, agriculture was the only activity, but uh, in the urbanization and uh, industrialization process, we see a major company called uh, Three Gorge Energy. Uh, th that company built up a this kind of PV uh, generation plant uh, in the village, first providing the rent to the villagers, uh, providing 800 RMB per Chinese mu for the year. Secondly, uh, uh, job opportunities were provided to the villages for the cleaning and the installation of this uh, PV board. So the villages, uh, by participating in this process, can generate wealth. Second driver is the microeconomic regional strategy that is. Uh, bringing a lot of benefits to the regional development. Uh, Hebei is one of the poor provinces, uh, and the uh, Xiong'an district uh, was defined uh, as a new region to uh, undertake uh, some functions uh, from the capital of the country. So a lot of uh, uh, processing industries were relocated to nearby villages, including Dianshan village. Thirdly, government investment played a role in the poverty reduction, with uh, more and more investment uh, uh, in the place. That and uh, 12 million last year, accounting for 1.4 percent of the government spending. Hospitals, uh, road, and uh, the urban housing improvement were all funded by the government. Last is the precise poverty reduction strategy. We are helping each household with their own program that they can participate in the local industry, such as uh, photo village or the uh, the apple uh, apple production or the 
some seasonal working opportunities nearby. Before I left the village, I asked the, the landlord who is called Bai Hu. I said, uh, the Spring Festival is coming. What uh, is your wish? Uh, he said, uh, first of all, I think I should have a better house, better family, and a better village, and a better country, so that uh, all the people can enjoy their family their village and their countryside. This is the goal of the government, and that's also the goal of the Poverty Reduction Leading Office. That's our mission. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our next uh, speaker today, uh, the Senior Policy Researcher and Tang Chair in uh, China Policy Studies, uh, the RAND Center for Asia Pacific Policy. A great pleasure to uh, welcome uh, Professor Jennifer Bui. Jennifer, thank you very much. Thank you. I am very, feel very privileged to be here among all the distinguished speakers. Uh, so I am asked to, to come here to talk about health, global health. So my background, I was trained as a physician in China many, many years ago, and I was trained as a public health researcher in the United States. So now, after after 14 years uh, working as a professor in the uh, Georgetown University, now I'm the town chair for China policy at RAND Corporation. Um, I think most people know RAND, so I, I won't add more to that. Uh, RAND is a think tank uh, in, in the United States. So I guess I'm one of the two Americans here, sort of. So I'm Chinese American. So why health? Um, so I think today no one has talked about the pneumonia yet, but several people have asked me, what about the Wuhan pneumonia? What about China? So I think that I want to mention that because that's global health, um, because virus doesn't have borders. Uh, no matter where, uh, how we want to talk about decoupling or competition, uh, the collaboration on how to deal with pandemics is important. And it's important for globalization, it's important for economy. Because we are very fresh in our memory that SARS 15 years ago uh, has infected more than 8,000 people uh, globally, uh, spread to 35 countries, and killed about 700 people. And then in that year, 2003, 2004, China's GDP dropped uh, 1 to 1.5 percent due to SARS. So the, a pandemic is not just one country's issue, it's a global issue. And um, that's something we would like to collaborate on. And I want to also talk about health because we're talking about poverty. And I think China has done a, a wonderful job in its domestic public health even before 1978 when the economy took off. Um, because we have seen the statistics that the life expectancy increased from around 45 uh, to about 60 uh, by the time it's 1980. So that's because China, even before the economy uh, took off, uh, they focused on public health, on water sanitation, on hygiene, and they focused on uh, infectious diseases elimination and uh, boosting the maternal and child health. And those are the experiences that China has that they want now to build into their BRI program or their uh, foreign uh, health assistance program. Not many people know about China's foreign health assistance programs. It's not new. It's dated back all the way to 1963 when China sent out its first China, uh, medical team to Algeria. Uh, when the, uh, their uh, French uh, physician left uh, because of the war. And ever since then, the health diplomacy is a big part of the China's diplomacy, and it has been quite successful. So over the years, China has sent out more than 25,000 uh, medical physicians on these teams to, to many countries in Africa and in Southeast Asia. And they build, helped build uh, more than 150 hospitals and trained uh, many uh, physicians from other countries. They bring them back to China uh, for training. And then they also donate medical devices. And in 2014 to 16, China sent out a team of more than 1,200 uh, 
uh, medical uh, professionals uh, for the Ebola uh, uh, humanitarian aids. So I think these are the traditional China um, health diplomacy uh, programs, activities. Um, and nowadays we see that the BRI actually are giving more uh, fuel to these uh, activities uh, with the new South to South uh, South-to-South -south assistant collaboration programs. I think one billion is uh, built into the global health issues. So I also want to mention a few new programs that I think um, really helps putting all these different parts of the global the health programs together. We, I just visited Yunnan a couple of months ago. And they, we used to work together on the, the HIV uh, issues uh, across the southeast borders of China. And now they're facilitating a few programs um, for the Laos, um, Myanmar, and Cambodia. And these are programs not just focusing on infectious diseases, but also on chronic uh, problems that we see increasingly becomes the disease burden uh, in developing countries. So there's one program on screening for cervical cancer cancer using the self-exam uh, 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 um, kit and then uploading this um, image to AI, to clouds, and using AI technology to do the diagnosis and helping the local hospital to, help to, to do the biopsy for the, uh, for the necessary uh, procedures. And then we also see another program is focusing on screening for cardiovascular diseases and the screening for uh, strokes. So I think China's global health program come out of its own experience that health is a basic for poverty relief. And uh, I fully hearted hope that China can start to collaborate and continue to collaborate with the local health systems and with multilateral organizations to strengthen its health diplomacy. I think that's the win-win situation. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, next uh, on our live stream from uh, Davos today, it's a very great pleasure to uh, introduce to you the uh, Executive Deputy Director of Poverty Alleviation Office, uh, the China Ping and Insurance Group Company Limited, uh, Mr. Yao Chen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Your Excellencies and distinguished guests, I'm so honored that to have the chance to speak here and to share with you the successful uh, uh, plans and programs of uh, poverty uh, reduction of Pinga Insurance Group company. Pinga is a, a young company. It was established in 1988. Uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, but it has grown from the scratch to be a big company. Now we are now listed in a Fortune 500 uh, list we are number 29th and we are number 7th uh, in the Forbes uh, Global uh, 2000 list and we are the first among all the uh, listed insurance company uh, worldwide uh, in the name of uh, market capital. Uh, Ping An started a, a poverty uh, alleviation program two years ago, answer to the call of uh, our CPC uh, Central Committee and the government. So as a Chinese, uh, we are proud and so proud that uh, this year we'll witness that we'll put an end to absolute poverty. Uh, this is really a miracle. And uh, as a company, you know, uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, I prepare a, a PPT, but uh, it, it, it's too long, so that I give you a few examples about uh, what we have done. So, Ping An is uh, a doer rather than a talker. Uh, now, uh, we have uh, 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 put a, a uh, uh, we designed this uh, uh, poverty alleviation program named a uh, three village program, namely village officer, village doctor, and a village teacher representing industry, health, and education-based poverty solutions. Uh, the program is designed to help uh, the villagers 
uh, in the uh, poverty-stricken area to develop industry, to get basic medical treatment, and a good education for the kids. So currently, a total of RMB uh, 15 uh, billion yuan funds have been granted by Pinga Company, uh, which directly helps uh, more than 53,000 people uh, to end poverty and uh, benefits an impoverished population of over 500,000 people. So the, this program showcases Pinga style uh, uh, alleviation of blood generation rather than blood transfusion. It consists of uh, four as, uh, aspects as, uh, as the following. Uh, first, we uh, start the training program. We uh, know that the person is the key uh, to uh, uh, solve the problem. So we train the village talents to kick the ball rolling, help them get the agriculture technology, and uh, build people's ability to lift themselves out of poverty. And we have trained uh, more than uh, 600 village offices. We provide the basic uh, guidance uh, uh, online and offline uh, about ag agriculture uh, education programs. And uh, secondly, we find uh, the uh, uh, select the distinctive and uh, sustainable and competitive industry for each county. We call it one county, one product. So uh, only in this way we help them strengthen market competitiveness. So till now we have selected more than uh, 100 agriculture products across China. And thirdly, we provide financial poverty relief. Uh, the companies of poverty uh, stricken areas are very difficult to access funds. So we provide the credit guarantee insurance. This is very unique by our company and the interest the subsidies and the low-cost poverty relief funds for the rural companies to start their business. And in some cases, we provide interest-free loans to the companies which must promise to employ the local poor people or to buy the agriculture products at the price at least 10% higher than the market price. In this way, the company becomes the stakeholder. Uh, together with the villagers, and uh, sh shoulders the responsibility to help the other villagers. So with the farms and technologies, we help the farmers plant sweet potatoes, tea, sugar cane, uh, grape fruits, uh, black beans, oat, mango, and uh, raise cows, pigs, and honey beans. And the uh, fourth is uh, risk managers, management. We provide uh, Productions, monitor, and a smart disaster management technology to help rural companies to produce quality products and reduce losses from natural disasters. And we also provide guarantees to protect the farmers and their properties through poverty prevention insurance. And we also help them to sell their products through, through the blockchain chasing system and the food safety insurance. We give the agriculture brands an endorsement to help the products increase added values and get accepted by the quality sale, sales channels. And we help farmers develop their sale market, both online and offline. You know, we have 200 million individual uh, customers. So this is a big market for them. So we help them a lot. So uh, time is limited. And now, uh, after that, uh, if question and answers, I can brief you more about uh, how we uh, help uh, the uh, uh, rural area people uh, in the field of uh, uh, medical services and in the education. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm sure there'll be questions for you later on in the session. If you're just joining us on this uh, live feed on CGTN, uh, welcome to Davos. Uh, you're watching our panel discussion on sharing experience, on poverty alleviation, and promoting common development. Our next speaker this afternoon, it's a very great pleasure to uh, welcome the Executive Dean of Schwarzman College, uh, Mr. Pan. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. And good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I, I now there's uh, poverty alleviation is uh, not sexy like AI, but uh, it's so important. It's so important it's in uh, social and economic development. And uh, I, you know, there's five distinguished speakers that give the, uh, the whole pictures from uh, theoretical and also uh, practical uh, point of views. So I just continue their uh, points. And I, just, I share one story and uh, two points. The story is, you know, 
five years ago, I brought the students to the the east side of the Gansu. There's a pro province in uh, China, and uh, that area is uh, not de developed. So one, I brought the students and our teachers and our colleagues there. When we saw that the village, everyone cried. Everyone cried. Why? You know, we live in Beijing, we live in Shanghai, we live in the, uh, the Switzerland, in the, the Davos or Zurich. We've never seen that. We, ne we have never seen that. It's so poor, it's, uh, it's, we cannot imagine that. And uh, so the whole family, they don't have nothing. Empty. They don't have a home. And the whole village live in the cave. This cave is so, so simple. So that is five years ago. And we keep going there, like uh, Director Su said, there's a village and uh, show our students. And in the last five years, the conditions has been changed, has been changed. And now they get much better for everything, f physically and the spiritual, especially. So they, you know, they, they have the st the, their children can go to school and they have a little bit better home and they have a income. And uh, summarize what they, what they did in the last five years, three things. The first one is the government, government give the public finance support. So they support them is the no tax and give them some financial support to do something, do a lot of things. So a lot of things. Second is give them a little bit of technology. You know, there's a, there's a seed, you know, they plant the whatever, the corn or the, uh, the wheat. It's a the high quality seed can get some more production. And also, as a Director Su said, there's, a, there's a other fruit trees for, from technology in that poor areas. The second one. The third one is the transportation, I mean the, the road. Yao Zhi Fu Xian Xiu Lu, still same. So the, a lot of uh, the small road and the highway around that area. So now they can go outside easily. So three things can cover everything not in this village. Everywhere in China the same. So that's kind of the example. So that's a story. So one, we go there again, and we can see the happy face, the happy face. So that's the share one story. The two points. The first one is, you know, the, the poverty uh, elevation is a dynamic thing. So yesterday uh, I was with the two excellencies, former former uh, premier and the president in Athens, Greece. So there's another there was another meeting, uh, and you know the 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 the, the f like 11 years ago, around 11 years ago, the, the Greece. It's, before that, is kind of the the rich countries. Uh, the GDP per capita is over 15,000, but but after financial crisis, average income dropped 30% for everyone. A lot of people get back to the poor. So what that mean? That means that's dynamic. Someone get, ri get rid of the poor, and maybe someone drop in the poor areas. So that's a dynamic long-term situation. So we have to keep doing that. So that's the first the points. The second one. So that is uh, education. Our speakers mentioned that. You know, I'm from university, and we we don't have uh, enough money like Ping An. They can give a lot of financial support to the uh, our uh, the underdeveloped areas. But we can educate our students, cultivate our students to understand this situation for the long term, the battle. So that's what we can do. So thank you so much. Thank you. So Ping An is not. Uh you're generously offering an enormous amount of money to his university. Is that what you're saying? Excellent. Good. It's all live. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we'll move on to our, our next speaker this afternoon, uh, the director of uh, the China Institute at Fudan University, uh, Professor Wei Wei Zhang. Thank you very much. Thank you. As we all know, China indeed has created a miracle in terms of fighting poverty. Uh, having traveled around the world for over, I've traveled to over 100 countries, about 70 of the developing countries. I would say, you know, in developing countries, poverty is the 
most serious problem for them. Even in relatively rich countries like the United States, you still see a lot of poverty. So I think China's experience could be inspiring for most countries in the world. Uh, I think there are four messages from the China success which could be encouraging to the outside world. First is what I call people's livelihood first. Whatever you do, economic reform, political reform, social change, they should all end up in improving people's livelihood, whether in terms of physical conditions or spiritual dimension. So this is crucial. And uh, I'm thinking of the internet. When the internet was created by the West, then it was immediately politicized, especially by the United States, to promote color revolution, regime change. But when the internet came to China, we make it under the guidance of people's livelihood first, make people's life easier, convenient, happier. As a result, China 4G coverage networking network is 99 villages of China. Wherever you go, that's how you, know, you can fight poverty through 4G, through mobile phone. Wherever you go, you assume you can use mobile payment wherever in China. And um, uh, second message is I call proactive state. Yeah. Indeed, we all know uh, new uh, liberal uh, economic theory. The government governs least, governs less, best. In fact, in fighting poverty, I assure you, the role of the state is crucial. Otherwise, it will be very difficult. Uh, in the case of China, of course, uh, it has a long tradition of relatively powerful and strong state that to do with China's own uh, history. And the role of state is especially played in such areas like strategic planning, which is crucial, and also in criteria setting. And uh, for instance, uh, I try to compare the Chinese criteria for fighting poverty with other countries. It's by no means low. Uh, uh, in addition to the financial indicators, uh, and those are two, what we call the liang bu chou san bao zhang. Do not, don't, no worry about food, no worry about clothing, base guarantee for housing, for medical insurance, and for education. And we made a rough calculation in the province in Yunnan, in the county in Yunnan. Uh, I think the state invested at least, at least, about fifty thousand dollars per household to achieve this level. Fifty five zero thousand. So that reminds me of um, United States. If we look at the UN poverty report issued by United Nations Poverty Reporter. He said, that's the report for, for uh, 2017, that it has three levels of poverty. Number one is 14 million very poor. And of this, 18 million extremely poor. Of this, 53 million, uh, no, no, 5.3 million, as poor as those in extremely poor developing countries which means roughly $15,000 per year per person, including food aid, yeah. So my own thinking and conclusion, very tentative one, is the Chinese achievement at this level, which means by the end of the year, the last five million people will be out of poverty. They have achieved this uh, uh, criteria. They will be better, uh, much better, at least better than the last category, 5.3 million poor Americans maybe even comparable with the higher level. So that's uh, something we can compare with the United States. And number three, the third message is a, a development-led process, rather than charity and uh, relief aid. Relief aid is important. PI is doing a great job. But on the whole, it's essentially it's about development. China has largely maintained the growth rate of 9% a year for nearly, for almost four decades. And foreign trade, 15% a year for four decades. That's the macro picture. And then at the micro picture, you have uh, all kinds of small programs, like the one I know in Zhejiang is one village, one product. Each village tries to find, identify its own indigenous product uh, uh, to uh, reduce poverty. 
lastly, a multi-pronged approach, which means all kinds of actors, state, non-state sectors, uh, even People's Liberation Army, Tsinghua University, my university, uh, NGOs, volunteers, all players play a role in this overall picture of fighting poverty. So my final conclusion is very simple. Uh, now uh, China has a population of 1.4 billion, <laughs> and uh, which has, what does it, mean? it means largely equivalent of the, 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 the sum total of 100 average European states put together. In Europe, a country is roughly 14 million people. China has 1.4 billion people. And these 1.4 billion people have reached a comfortable level of living standards. And we have 500, 400 million middle class. They are middle class in China, in Europe, United States, same. So that changes the, the global landscape and even the fate of mankind. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause. Thank you very much. Our next uh, speaker today is uh, Chair Professor of China Agricultural University, Honorary Dean of uh, China Belt and Road Institute for Agricultural Cooperation. Very great pleasure to uh, welcome to speak to us, uh, Professor Lee. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Uh, <coughs> sorry. Uh, I'm not going to, uh, you know, the, the, the rapid development and transformation in China has really carried many uh, experiences and lessons and I'm multi, you know, multi, uh, multiple dimensions and I'm not going to, uh, uh, I'm not going to include all those, you know, experiences and lessons at this uh, very short time panel. I'm going to just take one area uh, looking for uh, relationship between the growth and the poverty reduction globally, uh, particularly for the uh, global uh, source. And the three, actually three narratives, if we, uh, uh, if we're going to assess the relationship between growth transformation and the poverty reduction. First one, we, we, we focus on the area where we focus on the region for the sub-Saharan Africa, where you find uh, uh, very, uh, you, you find uh, decoupling between the growth and uh, poverty reduction. So that is the area of one, one narrative. And the second one you, f you find uh, mostly in uh, East Asia countries, in the Southeast Asia countries, where you find very high relationship between the growth and the poverty reduction. And the third one, which we call China's model. And what are the differences for this? And the first one for for the for the for the, for the African so for, for the uh, for sub-African model and growth over the last ten to fifteen years, the sub-African countries maintained almost like seven six five from five to seven percent of growth rate annually, but it has not yet produced a significant reduction in poverty. Reason why? Because uh, the area, uh, the sector which uh, which maintained high growth rate, is not the area, is not the sector where engage or employed uh, most of the population of the society. So this is uh, basically uh, the reason why you see the uh, you see the issue in sub-Saharan countries in terms of the striking situation for the poverty reduction. The second area, secondly. And agriculture in, in the African, in, so in sub saharan African countries, you know, just maintained 2 to 3 percent. And the population growth uh, is almost like 3 percent. So high population growth actually, uh, uh, you know, undermined uh, agricultural growth. This is, one, uh, this is one reason. The second reason is that agricultural growth in the region largely comes from the area expansion, not from the product not from the product productivity improvement, and which means that the labor productivity is very low, very low. So this also explains why the poverty in the region has remains very high. So this is the one narrative, one model, one story we talk about in um, uh, Africa. The second one for the East Asia country, I'm looking for the Cambodia, Vietnam, and, um, and many, you know, many Myanmar, other countries, like the Philippine, Philippine and all other countries. And those countries, you have relatively very high economic growth and also high rates of poverty reduction, which is highly related. But at the same time, you see, and the 
growth primarily and mainly comes from foreign investment, not from domestic, not from domestic growth. And then we come back to the China. It's very different. In 1980s, the growth primarily coming mainly from agriculture. And during those periods of time, and the most population in my country is the agriculture is farmers, you know, farmers. And again, after the mid of 1980s, and the growth for the whole economy primarily come from the rural industry, for the township and the mid township and enterprises in the industry. And they followed 1990s, follows rapid urbanization. So you see the combination of agriculture and uh, rural industry and urbanization, which contribute, con contribute continuous power reduction in the country, and which give a different, uh, very different picture with the two other two regions, South East Asia region, primarily comes from in welfare investment. So that means, that, that means the, the performance, power reduction performance in South East, South East Asia countries can be very vulnerable. If the if the whole global economy or the regional economy gets a problem, gets a problem, and uh, for the African, for the African, particularly for the for the sub saharan African, for for the for that region, and agriculture is still the area where they need to pay attention. So, in summary, my conclusion here is that you know that the China is very different from you know from other China is very you know very big country. You cannot compare China. We cannot provide any recipe. We cannot provide any recipe to any other country or any other, any other reason. So the less experience the lessons from China's rapid economic growth and the rapid trans social economic transformation and power reduction actually carries very basic lesson that economic growth, uh, if you want to reduce the poverty and the ag agricultural, agricultural growth, and, uh, and no, no, economic growth must be proper and must be inclusive. So that is my conclusion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And quick reminder, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you uh, in the audience here in Davos, we'll uh, be taking your questions uh, in just a few moments. Um, but last uh, and not least, a very great pleasure to uh, welcome our final speaker today, uh, the president of uh, Jiangsu University, uh, Professor Yan. Thank you very much. Thank you. On behalf of Jiangsu University and the uh, China Association uh, for the promotion of uh, international agriculture uh, compilation. I would like to uh, thank for the invitation of chairman and the organization uh, com committee uh, of this uh, forum. In my talk, I'll show you what we do uh, about uh, uh, belt and road uh, initiative uh, as a provincial key universities. As is know, uh, two facts should be remembered. First, agriculture has ever been the foundation of China's progress. The conventional farming tour involved from uh, primitive stone lives to advanced farming facilities. As meanwhile, the agriculture production shifted from uh, extensive to uh, intensive. Uh, many a farm tour was introduced into the ancient Silk Road countries. Second, New China's agricultural progress uh, on technicals as well as uh, machinery uh, has rendered it possible uh, for China to feed nearly 20% of, of, of world's population uh, with less than 9% of world's arable Land. As one of China's first key uh, universities to offer systematic education programs on agriculture machinery, uh, Jiangsu University has been shouldering the mission of promoting agriculture machinery and the modernization. Entrusted by UNIDO, and so on, we have provided 15 agricultural machinery training programs for more than 30 developing countries and regions. Uh, in recent year, we have actively engaged the, uh, in debate and read in, 
uh, initiative uh, to, by providing agriculture machinery training programs in Zambia, Kenya, and uh, Pakistan. The efforts has contributed to the uh, reduction of um, poverty in these areas. Uh, Jiangsu University uh, took the initiative to uh, fund international university consortium of agriculture engineering and was elected as a chair. We established a B and R universities education alliance for international talents cultivation and education. International cooperation alliance on agriculture equipment in joint effort with over 200 enterprises, including YTO, NOVA, uh, World Group, and so on, uh, which was established by the uh, suggestion of ICC. We set up BNR College of International Talents, BNR Industry Education Integra Integration Industry Institutes, jointly established 50 uh, practice spaces for international talents, promoted need-based projects, projects-based courses, and uh, three plus one, as well as uh, one plus one cultivation models. Uh, in recent five years, we have uh, produced about 1,600 uh, international talents for 81 uh, belt and road countries um, poverty reduction. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the belt and road countries are in agent need for solution to start starvation, uh, poverty, and food safety. It is our common desire to conduct compilation on agriculture technologies. As Confucius sought us uh, a person of virtue, where he established himself and per pursuing success, also works to establish others and enable them to succeed as well. Jiangsu University is certainly hope to, reinf to, to re reinforce our cooperation with international universities, enterprises, and uh, uh, organizations to enhance international agriculture, machinery, talents, uh, cultivation, and to make greater contribution to power reduction in belt and load countries. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes uh, the uh, introductory remarks from uh, all of our panelists. If uh, you're just joining us on the live stream, uh, welcome to uh, Davos and uh, this live coverage from CGTN. Uh, we're now going to uh, throw open the floor uh, to uh, our guests here. If you'd like to ask uh, our guests any questions, uh, please put your hand up and we'll operate in the usual way. Um, I know we could probably hear you, sir, but I'm going to run a microphone to you for the sake of the live stream broadcast. If you could just wait for the microphone and tell us, uh, first of all, your name, uh, your question, where you're from, and if I can ask you to keep your question very short and succinct. Thank you very much. Welcome. Okay. My name is Uli Merz. I'm from Switzerland board member from the Swiss Chinese Association. I have a question to the distinguished speaker from Ping An Insurance. Thank you. I think your program sounds great, and I think every person, every village who gets out of poverty in China, that's a great move. What I'm asking is how you organize this. I mean, poverty reduction, education, health, usually should be basically the job of the government. So how do you work with the government? How do you choose your projects? And how do you decide? Who decides? I mean, you are a big insurance. And I'm aware that many Chinese have insufficient health insurance. So maybe that would be one part of okay. making uh, the situation easier if Ping An Bank provide affordable insurance. Thank you very much. This is another unstoppable that, commercial you. for you, sir. Thank you. Uh, take you it know, away. I, I'm so uh, happy that, uh, to answer the questions. So, you know, uh, as I said, uh, uh, 
Pinga is a company that serves more than 200 million customers domestically and internationally. That's one number. And the second number is the internet user. We have different APPs. Our, you know, life insurance company, uh, and also we have banks, we have trust, we have, you know, foundation and uh, investment uh, department. We serve uh, uh, almost uh, 600 uh, million uh, internet users. So we are too big. Actually, that's why uh, we uh, care about the, uh, not just the industry development uh, for the poverty area, you know, uh, villagers, but also health. You know, health is our key mission to protect the people from, you know, diseases. We help them uh, to provide the basic medical services and the treatment. And, uh, and the thirdly, the education, because without a uh, uh, good uh, generation, the younger generation, there will be no future for the, for the villagers. Uh, You're growing tomorrow's customers, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so actually, we, with the help of, of uh, uh, the government and the provincial level or even the county level, we go to. We have branches uh, throughout the country, even to the you know county level. So we know the needs, and uh, we know what exactly they need. So although you know, <laughs> people often say. Think globally, act locally, so we can act locally. We do not give money. We just find the unique way of uh, blood generation to help. So one question for all the people here, not just uh, for this you know, dialogue, that uh, how can you help uh, SME to get the loans? That's one question. So you need to get the support from the banks from the government but banks are reluctant to give money you know to do the loan to the SME because they are poor and you cannot uh, make sure that they can return money so that's one question and then is the second how to uh, help them uh, give a boost to the productivity and enhance the competitiveness and the third question is how can you connect the SMEs with the poor families, the poor villages. And then, you know, we help the companies. We do not help individuals because too many individuals. So we find the, the local that uh, most sustainable and competitive company. So that's, and we even send our managers okay. and the employees to the villages, to the rural areas he as want, volunteers. He wants you to open a branch in Switzerland. So you talk to him and uh, he'll come and work to you. <laughs> thank you very much. I'm going to move on because there's p people who want to get in here. But thank you for your question and thank you for your commercial. So, so la, la, no, 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 stop. I've got to get more people in as well. They're, they're going to shout at me. Okay. This gentleman, thank, but excellent answer. HSBC, Think Local. Um, yes. Tell us, t tell us your, na your full name, where you're from, and your question. Keep it relatively brief. Don't ask him any more questions. Carry on. The idea of poverty reduction is very noble. Would you like to relate it to the ecological footprint? In other words, is the planet sufficient to alleviate uh, poverty, number one? Number two, how climate change is making your job even more difficult? Well, they've talked a lot. You answer your own questions, because I'm interested. We've got a professor from Harvard University yes. here. This is very good. It's a better class of audience in Davos, isn't it, by and large? Um, you answer, you answer your, your question, first of all, and then we'll hear from them. Well, actually, we are famous for being very good moderators, like what you're doing. So I will avoid answering my own question, because I came here to learn. I, I'd still <laughs> like to listen to you. Um, Rosen, you, you start us off on this briefly, please. Brief, brief, brief points from our panel, please. And then more questions. Can you borrow that? Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. So, of course, uh, I was a president, uh, but I, my background is artificial intelligence, being a computer programmer. Uh, very interesting, I was also a manager. My answer will be more as a manager, because managers, uh, as a difference to politicians, are very realistically thinking. 
but positively thinking. You're looking at the problem, you point at the problem in order to solve it, not just to play with people's fears about that. And uh, I think that the planet is well set up to move in a better way. I think that if you, you look at the full factfulness of where we are today, not just one, two, or three, you know, very worried people about, but really about where we are today, Technologies are there in place for the planet to move forward. Countries are getting smarter. Just look at China, setting up clear priorities, having a long-term plan, having the right approach to succeed. And here it is that poverty in 2020 is going to be eliminated in China. It's a great example of what can you do. And uh, not just, I would say, looking at China and comparing to many other regions, China was very smart of putting education as probably a top priority. And no matter if this agriculture, artificial intelligence, uh, quantum computing, today China has produced an army of very well-educated young people that are making the difference, probably to some other countries we see today. And because of that, let us learn more from uh, the success of China. Uh, but also, as you rightly said, being globally strong, you need to be locally strong. You need to face up the needs of a small village, of unsuccessful country, of a poor neighborhood, and you need to be inclusive with all of them so that they could see the hope and the result. And this is possible. So I am realistic about the problems we face, but I'm very positive that we're on the right way Let me bring, to produce uh, a better planet. Thank you. Let me bring Jennifer Bui in, please, and a quick word uh, on this question here, please. Can you throw the microphone down? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I was just thinking, you know, in terms of poverty relief and health, and also, you know, since I joined uh, RAND about six months ago, I started to learn a, a lot about economy and uh, economics, because uh, there are lots of economists at RAND. So my thought on this is, um, first of all, you know, from health perspective, um, the climate change you mentioned, uh, the, uh, the, the challenges we face, uh, is really go back to the one health. So how animal uh, diseases and human diseases, how they bump, jump to each other, and how we deal with the planet as one environment that the, the health of the planet and the health of the human are really closely connected. And that needs a global efforts, global collaboration. I mentioned Wuhan uh, pneumonia earlier. What I didn't have time to say that I actually very impressed by China's response on this, not, not about the reporting system, but of the scientific uh, response to this virus within uh, about you know, 10 days uh, of the announcement, they already have the genome, uh, genome uh, sequence ready and they send it to the international platforms so that other uh, the scientists all over the world can uh, look at this genome uh, uh, sequence and simulate that and try to find the antibody and, and work on the, the uh, vaccine already. So to me, that's a advance uh, of globalization that, uh, and, and engaging China in, in that process. So I think with China's unique contribution and uh, the continued global, globalization, uh, at least uh, the future looks a little bit more optimistic. Thank you very much. But I think you were trying to get to the point that poverty alleviation inevitably means more and more wealthy consumers and more and more people buying cars and taking flights and the rest of it. I mean, that was your principal concern from your question, was it not? It was, it was the ecological footprint. Yeah. And also climate change reduces food, reduces uh, actually resources. So how can we alleviate poverty when everybody wants to have a sale of that? And one planet is not enough. And four or five for Davos residents, probably. Um, yeah, Zad Klo, you pick up and, and talk to us about this, but please answer these, this specific question. Yeah, uh, I think uh, Professor 
Polalis as well as uh, Ro uh, Rosen and myself. I'm also first educated uh, computer scientist generation in my country. So too many computer scientists in one room. That's the reason why we are not so precise. I mean, that's the reason why we need artificial intelligence, but it's another panel. Now, uh, I think that you are absolutely, we have to take this from this perspective. I'm personally promoting something uh, which is called share society approach. Share society, uh, I think that we have, uh, we, we have to look for the new paradigm and partnership between planet, production, and people, which is shared society, inclusive society. Inclusive society is actually poverty reduction. You have not have society with poverty and being shared society, inclusive society. So we have to find a way to put together shared society approach, uh, shared development. This Davos manifesto about stakeholders, capitalism versus shareholders versus state capitalism is about actually shared development. And third element is shared planet which is exactly what we're talking So we have to look for the new paradigm, how to put these three things together. Without holistic approach to tackle these three things, we are simply dead meat. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for your question, sir. Much appreciated. I know all of them dodged it, really, but yeah, they, they did their best. Um, let me see if there are any more questions uh, here in uh, the audience. I've got a couple of my own, which I hope you don't mind I throw in. Oh, we'll, yeah, the lady in yellow. I wanted to say the lady in red, because that's a better line, isn't it, from uh, a terrible music, um, a terrible song. The lady in yellow, please. Uh, you've got a microphone. Please tell us your name uh, and uh, where you come from. And if I can ask you in the final moments to keep your answer very brief, please. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I'm Lina Liu from ETH Zurich. Now I'm a PhD candidate there. And uh, my question goes to Mrs. Uh, Su Guoxia from L -O, uh, LJOP. I, 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 when I was in Renmin University of China, I, I, was, I did a, a fieldwork survey with a, a, a research project collaborated with uh, the LJOP. And uh, uh, we found many a uh, poor province. They are in like uh, Guangxi and uh, Guizhou, some uh, province that actually are along the BRI project. So my question is, uh, how do you think the BRI project actually help to uh, reduce the poverty? Please keep your answer brief, please. We're in the final few minutes of our session. Thank you very much for your answer, and uh, thank you also. I'm very pleased to hear this question from an alumna, and in particular an alumna of our cooperation program, not just of my university. I think that as the BRA contributes to global growth, it will bring more income and employment to people worldwide as the BRI is implemented within China, it will bring more opportunities for participation to people in less well-off areas and thus serve also to improve their incomes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your question. And um, unless there are any more, I'm just going to uh, wrap up our panel discussion, unless there are any more questions from uh, our audience here, which I don't think there are. Um, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for our panel, first of all, please. Thank you very much. Give them a round of applause. Um, that is the end of uh, our panel discussion uh, and uh, the events here today, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as they say in Davos, the bars are now open. Um, thank you for coming to those of you here in the audience and for those of you watching on the live stream. Thank you very much for your company. Uh, from all of us here, thank you and goodbye. Please remain on stage for... Uh